Have you ever stopped to think about how a can of soda or an airplane, two completely different objects, have something in common? Both are made of a surprisingly versatile material that is lightweight, durable, and best of all, completely recyclable. Aluminum. This metal, which we know and use every day, has an incredible story of transformation. From a rock extracted from the Earth's depths to the shiny material we see on the market, the journey of aluminum is fascinating. It is the most used metal in modern industry due to its exceptional properties. Its lightness, strength, and the ability to be recycled over and over again without losing its characteristics. If you've ever wondered how a simple rock-like botoxite turns into aluminum, get ready to discover the amazing manufacturing process behind this everyday material. Step 1. Bauxite Mining Bauxite is a sedimentary rock found mainly in tropical and subtropical climates. It is a mineral formed by the weathering of basaltic rocks and contains large amounts of aluminum oxide, which is the basic component of aluminum. Some of the main bauxite producing countries include Brazil, Australia, Guinea, and Jamaica. The extraction process of bauxite begins with an open pit mining operation. This type of mining involves the removal of large amounts of soil and rocks to reach the underlying bauxite layer. Mining companies must clear extensive areas of vegetation and remove the soil until they reach the bauxite. Using heavy machinery such as excavators and giant trucks that transport tons of material. In some areas, controlled explosives are used to break the rocks into smaller, more manageable pieces. This operation requires meticulous planning as the explosions must be carefully calculated to avoid unnecessary environmental damage. After fragmentation, the extracted materials are collected and transported via large conveyor belts to the processing plant. Bauxite mining is not only a physical process, it also has significant environmental implications. Because it is conducted in open pit mines, impacts include deforestation, loss of biodiversity, and alteration of the local ecosystem. To mitigate these effects, mining companies work with environmental regulators to restore the land once extraction is complete. Step 2. Crushing and Separation Process Once the bauxite has been extracted and transported to the processing facilities, the next step is crushing. In this process, the bauxite is reduced to a much smaller size, turning it into a fine powder. This powder is much easier to handle and process in the subsequent stages. After crushing, the crushed mineral is mixed with caustic soda in large processing tanks. Caustic soda is a highly alkaline substance that has the ability to dissolve some of the minerals contained in the bauxite. However, it does not affect the aluminum, which is the compound we want to extract. In this way, caustic soda acts selectively to separate the aluminum from the impurities present in the rock. The sodium aluminate that results from this mixture is the material that contains the aluminum and will be used in the following stages of the process. During this processing phase, impurities such as iron and silicon do not react with the caustic soda, making their removal easier. However, it is important to note that this process generates large amounts of waste, known as red mud, which must be managed properly to avoid environmental contamination. Step 3. The Chemical Digestion The next step in transforming bauxite into aluminum is digestion. Here, the mixture of crushed bauxite and caustic soda is subjected to high temperature and pressure conditions in enormous digesters. These digesters are large steel containers that withstand temperatures of up to 150 degrees Celsius and pressures of 30 atmospheres. During the digestion process, the caustic soda reacts with the aluminum oxide present in the bauxite, dissolving the aluminum in the form of sodium aluminate. This sodium aluminate is the basis for obtaining metallic aluminum, and as impurities such as iron and silica do not react with the caustic soda, they remain as solid waste. This process is crucial because it establishes the separation of aluminum from other elements present in the bauxite. 
The resulting solution contains a mixture of sodium aluminate and water. And the next step is to remove the impurities and prepare the solution for the following stage of the process. Step 4. Calcination and the formation of alumina. Once the sodium aluminate solution has been obtained, the next step is calcination. This process involves heating the sodium aluminate solution to extremely high temperatures, generally between 1000 degrees Celsius and 1200 degrees Celsius. During calcination, the sodium aluminate decomposes, releasing oxygen and forming alumina, aluminum oxide, which is the material that will eventually become metallic aluminum. Calcination takes place in enormous furnaces called calciners. Here, the sodium aluminate solution undergoes a decomposition process that produces a solid substance, alumina, a white powder. Alumina is the intermediate form between bauxite and metallic aluminum, and it is the key product used in the next stage of the process. To ensure that aluminum forms efficiently, seed crystals are used in this process. These seed crystals act as nucleation points, helping the alumina molecules to come together in a more orderly and structured way. This step is fundamental for obtaining pure alumina, as any impurity in the process would affect the quality of the aluminum produced later. Step 5. Electrolysis to extract aluminum. This is the step where we actually obtain pure aluminum through electrolysis. In this process, alumina is dissolved in a molten mixture of creolite, a mineral that facilitates the dissolution of alumina and lowers the melting point of the mixture. This molten mixture is placed in an electrolytic cell, a giant device where an electric current is applied to separate the aluminum from the other components. Electrolysis is carried out in a cell containing a mixture of alumina dissolved in cryolite. When a high-intensity electric current is applied, aluminum separates from the oxygen and is deposited at the bottom of the cell as molten metal. Oxygen, on the other hand, is released as gas at the top of the cell. This is a highly efficient process, though it is energy intensive, meaning that a large amount of electricity is required to produce aluminum on a large scale. This electrolysis process is conducted in large refining facilities that operate at extremely high temperatures to keep the alumina and cryolite mixture molten. The electrolytic cells are designed to maximize reaction efficiency and ensure that the extracted aluminum is of high purity. Step 6. Casting and Ingot Formation Once the aluminum has been separated from the oxygen via electrolysis, the next step is to pour the molten aluminum into molds to form ingots. Ingots are large blocks of aluminum that will be transported to other factories to be processed and transformed into final products, such as sheets, coils, or structural components. The casting process must be carefully managed to avoid oxidation or contamination of the aluminum during cooling. The aluminum ingots are slowly cooled to ensure that no cracks or imperfections form in the metal. After the ingots have solidified, they are visually inspected to ensure that they are free of defects and that they have the correct shape and dimensions. In some facilities, the aluminum ingots are further purified through additional processes to ensure that the metal is free of impurities, guaranteeing that the final product is of the highest possible quality. Step 7. Rolling and the creation of final products. The final step in aluminum manufacturing is the rolling process. Here, the aluminum ingots are passed through enormous rollers that compress and stretch them into thin sheets. Rolling is a key process because it is what allows aluminum to be turned into common products, such as soda cans, packaging sheets, or automotive components. The rolling process can be performed either cold or hot. In hot rolling, the aluminum is heated to temperatures above 300 degrees Celsius before passing through the rollers. This facilitates the stretching of the metal and improves its ductility. The resulting aluminum is then cut, rolled, and sent to factories where it is used in the production of final products. In addition to the products mentioned, aluminum is also used in the manufacturing of aircraft components, building structures, and a wide variety of industrial products. Due to its lightness and strength, aluminum is essential for many industries, from automotive to aerospace. And there you have it, the complete process that turns a bauxite rock 
into the aluminum we use every day. From bauxite extraction to the final processing of the metal, each step requires advanced machinery, cutting-edge technology, and careful handling to ensure that the aluminum produced is of high quality. This journey shows us the incredible amount of work and technology behind a material that seems so simple yet is so essential to modern life. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. See you next time.